Community Television. Hi, you're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. Go Girl Scouts! For the community, by the community. Sarah Connor and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah. My guest tonight is Louise Albin, president of Cafe Louise Catering, and she is going to help us to plan, prepare, and pack up the perfect picnic. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Louise. You're welcome. So as a caterer, you have done this thousands of times, I'm sure. Yes, I've been in business quite a long time. So what are your secrets to making sure a picnic is successful? Well, first off, um, you want to plan ahead, way in advance, uh, selecting a date, number one. Time, place, location where you're going to have this. Is this something that you're doing at your home? Are you planning it at a park? Um, or are you taking it to an outdoor concert? Um, and then who you're going to invite. Do you need to purchase tickets for that outdoor concert or are you just going to go and invite all the families with the children and um, go to a park somewhere and have a nice evening? And then it's basically, so your guest list. Right. So numbers. Right. Okay. And then uh, decide on a menu. And for summertime, you always need to think in terms of food safety, yes. uh, as well as some fun things that are also delicious and nutritious to eat and that appeal to both young and old. Okay. Um, so I guess let's talk about food safety because it is hot. And are there things that you just really should steer clear of including in your menu? I mean, is there anything that you just would say, just don't even try it? Or? No, not no. at all. Okay. Uh, nowadays, there's many ways to keep, you know, coolers, obviously, mm -hmm. that we've all known about for years. Um, and planning ahead, if you're doing uh, a chicken dish or a deviled egg or egg salad or okay. seafood, anything that people tend to think becomes dangerous in the heat, right. number one, you don't want to be preparing it the same day as of the event. Uh, you want to do that at least a day in, a, in advance so that it has the time to chill thoroughly. That's interesting. So you would, you would think that the fresher the better, but really for those things that could spoil, it's better to have it done and fully chilled before you pack it up and bring it. Unless you're getting up at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning doing your cooking that day and not serving it till 6 p.m. <laughs> okay. So I'm a big fan of planning ahead because you don't want to spend your whole day cooking, preparing, packing, and then by the time you get to your picnic, you're exhausted. Right. Well, for any event, really. I mean, I've, I've had Thanksgivings where I've learned now what I can do ahead, but the first Thanksgiving I ever did, I was exhausted. Of by the course. time Thanksgiving <laughs> rolled around, and I was no fun at all. Right. <laughs> Barely wanted to eat the food. So plan ahead, cook ahead. So and what a kinds lot of things, of things, things you that ahead? you can plan ahead, even before the food, is mm -hmm. what beverages are you going to serve? Okay. If it's just simple sodas and soft drinks and bottled waters, those you can buy, buy weeks and week in advance. You know, mm -hmm. weeks in advance, and just have it stored. Wine as well. Um, and plan if you're doing a nice picnic basket. Are you just doing simple disposables? That stuff you can do way in advance and just have it stored in a closet or out of the way. Okay. Um, if you're doing like today, I'm going to do a little sample of this tarragon chicken salad with grapes and walnuts, which is very simple to prepare. This you could do a couple days in advance. And if you're we we're doing it with a poached chicken breast. Mm -hmm. um, if you're really busy and strapped for time, you can buy a rotisserie chicken from the local grocery store and just take it off the bone and cube it up and use that. Okay, so that eliminates a step. Right. Any of the grain or potato salads you can do a day or two in advance as well. Uh, some of the chopping you can do even three days before and then cook your potatoes and your grains and put it all together a couple days in advance. So pretty much, it sounds like pretty much anything you can do. Right. Well, and what if you wanted to do it so far in advance you were going to freeze things? What 
can you and can you not freeze? What freezes well, what doesn't freeze well? The, anything with mayo will not freeze well, and I wouldn't do grain salads frozen. The chicken, you could prepare in advance, cube it, and freeze it, and that's fine. Obviously, fruit doesn't freeze. Um, some people do freeze pasta salads or pasta, but pasta takes five, ten minutes to cook, right. so it's not something that's real laborious. Now, is that something you want to make sure you do ahead so that's fully chilled as well, the yes. pasta? Yes, yes. Okay, so everything really needs to be completely chilled in the refrigerator, like 24 hours would be a good rule? Yes. Okay. And just for safety. If it's a 90, 100 degree day, just to be safe. Right. Okay. So it sounds like really you, you get your, you plan your date, you get your guest list, you know how many people you're going to have. You almost need a little timeline of these different things. So the checklist of the paper goods, um, you know, did you do that? The foods that you can prepare ahead of time and just kind of check the things off. Least, right, really, would right. make it the most organized. Yes. Yeah. And I'm also, for example, on the paper goods, I'm always telling um, people to, if you're having, if there's a, a part, if, if your guest list is 12 people, right. you obviously want more paper plates than for 12, as well as more mm -hmm. plasticware or real silverware, whichever you're going to be using. Uh, someone's going to drop it, a plastic fork would break. The kids are notorious for this, as well as the right. adults. Um, so you definitely want to plan at least two plates per person for both large and small, nine inch and six inch plates. Uh, plastic cups, the same thing, unless you're just gonna do drink out of the bottle and the soda can kind okay. of beverages. Um, and napkins, you know, you're notorious for going through lots of napkins, especially if there's mm -hmm. children involved. Um, or, you're serving, or you're serving alcohol. <laughs> right. Um, and yeah, just that there's an abundance. You okay. can always pack it up and right. reuse it another and time. And condiments. Um, Salt, pepper, uh, and what other condiments would you bring? I guess if your salads and things are pre-made, I don't know, if you're grilling, I suppose you could bring ketchup and that kind of stuff, ketchup and mustard. Yeah, and, and everything stuff, is packaged nowadays yeah. that it's in plastic bottles, so it's easy to right. transport. The only thing is if you get into pickles and stuff, I would take them out of the jar and probably put them in a plastic container. So you aren't because of the glass or because of the juice or just to keep it? I think it's simpler. Simpler. Yeah. You know, you don't want to take a chance jar. that the right the jar will get broken right. and so plastic containers is a good yes. rule of thumb. Tupperware or whatever. and you can still let's say you're taking those pickles out of the jar um, and you're using a Tupperware mm -hmm. container, line it with some romaine or green leaf or red leaf lettuce just to add a little touch of different color. Although mm -hmm. pickles are green and so is the lettuce. Um, Edible flowers are a nice touch. Okay. So there are ways to dress it up, even if it's still the same plastic containers you use right. in your for your leftovers. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, now, also with the paper goods, you probably want to make sure you have a garbage bag or two. Absolutely. Just in case there isn't a bin where you're going if and, you're going away. And I always wow. think in terms of do you need any fresh water in addition to the bottled waters? So do you want a a towel that's wet and put into a Ziploc bag, you know, whether it's to wipe your hands or wipe something else. Pack the bottle of Purell for if the kids are playing and then, you know, playing Frisbee or whatever, right. and then they're coming in, coming to the picnic table to eat, and so you can sanitize them somewhat. Um, yeah. So those are all good staples to have. And then, um, so here's a question. So you've planned your menu. Presumably you have your guest list, you have your menu, your guests have called and said, yes, I'm coming. Frequently, um, in fact, I think almost always, most of my friends, when we invite them for whatever it may be that involves food, they offer to bring something. So what is, and my mom and I have an ongoing debate about the etiquette of if you're planning something and you've invited someone to an event, is it okay to take them up on that offer? And I say, yes, it's okay if they've offered. My mom says, but I, you know, I invited them over. They shouldn't have to bring anything. Um, what is your I think, professional opinion on that? <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to be really clear as okay. to whether you want them to bring anything or not. Okay. Is this going to be your treat and gift to your closest friends mm -hmm. and family and you want to do the whole thing? or? Are you creating a menu where you will need help, or your, is your schedule such that you really do need help? And if they do offer, um, then have it planned. You want to do, you know, what is easiest for them 
mm -hmm. for you to ask them to bring. Is it going to be the fruit platter, you know, which if, if you know that they have a busy schedule, they can pick up at the local grocery store or something if they're... Um, or do you want them to bring a really nice baguette bread, for example, a bottle of wine, um, help with the beverages, and you do all the food because you know they don't cook well? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you just want to they... keep within a theme and it would be odd to give them a recipe. Like, right. yes, you can no, bring I something, do here's that. the recipe. That would be a little too much. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> However, right. if they are offering, um, I would imagine that it's in good faith and yeah. They're happy to Like do I said, it. either be right. clear and you don't want them to bring anything right. or right. they're well, happy to do it. Well, and I think, too, I, I'm in the place where we all, most of my friends have children, many, multiple children, and so we're all kind of pressed for time. And so I appreciate when someone offers, and I always feel like I want to help someone out, you know, if I'm going to of their course. house because they're juggling the family and the food and, um, you know, so I generally take people up on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you have brought some things that you are going to share with us. Should yes. we look at this beautiful display and see the sure. elements that you've included in your picnic? One thing I was going to quickly put together was okay. uh, it's a tarragon chicken salad with grapes and walnuts. Mm -hmm. You can also substitute pecans. You can leave out the nuts if you have family members allergies. or people that you know who mm -hmm. are allergic. Um, and it's a very simple salad, yet the flavors are wonderful. And it's the most requested salad we ever really we do. Yes, it's and there really are not years. that many ingredients here. No, it's very. That's simple. amazing. <laughs> so your secret. This is your secret recipe. That it is a secret you're recipe. Revealing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's basically poached uh, boneless, skinless chicken breast. And as I mentioned earlier, if people are too busy to poach the chicken, which is quite simple to do, mm -hmm. uh, buy the rotisserie chicken already at the right. grocery store and just take it off the bone and make it into bite-sized cubes. And then... So that's... What, I'm just going to hold this up while you're talking about the rest of it so we can kind of see the sizes. Yep. So this is cubed. Yes. This is a cube. Okay. And I know that in most grocery stores now, you can get even... You can get the rotisserie chicken, but you can also get grilled chicken or you can get, you know, the strips or the, yeah. you know, or poached chicken or I've even seen a store that has this in a package really? done. Yeah. Like this shape and everything. I've, I've actually used it. To, it saves time. I mean, it's right. easy to poach, right. but if you're pressed, you want to take one step out of it. It's, yep. it's a good thing to save time on. So this is just plain poached okay. chicken breast that's been cubed. This, as we mentioned earlier, also very easy to do in advance, mm -hmm. two, three days in advance, or freeze it. And then it's right. ready ready to go to make your chicken salad at any time. How long will cooked chicken last in the fridge? How long Usually is too Usually they long? say two, three days. Okay. So three days at the outside. Three days. Really? Okay. Okay. Three days to be safe. So then the other ingredients we have. And then here we have uh, just red seedless grapes okay. that have been cut in half, washed and cut in half. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to add them to the bowl. This Could you do cherries or some other fruit or just grapes really? Dried fruit. We do, dried fruit. Yes. Okay. Sometimes in the fall we'll do some with like a dried Bing cherry, a dried blueberry with nuts is also very nice. Mm, that does sound good. It's nice apricots to experiment. Apricots maybe? Or? Apricots would be good. Whatever, you're, okay. whatever you like. Your taste. Okay. Uh, these are some walnuts. They're, do you toast the walnuts? They're better if they're toasted. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure if these are or okay. not. Um, toasting nuts brings out the flavor. It does. It's such a yum. As long as you don't burn them, which I do frequently, right. I put them in, I think I, I can't forget these, and then all of a sudden I smell the burn. It's quick. You can burn either nuts. do them mm -hmm. in the oven, in a low oven, for like five to eight minutes. Right. You can actually do them in a fry pan as well. Just That's a dry same, pan. Just a dry mm -hmm. pan. But same thing, you have to really watch. This is dried tarragon. Uh, it's that time of year where if you grow fresh herbs like I do, you can also pick it from uh, your herb garden. And, and this takes a while. What's nice about doing this salad at least a day in advance is it gives, if it's dried tarragon or dried herbs you're using, it gives it um, a while to open up because they take at least three, four, like half a day before all the flavors right. really open up and meld together. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to add some mayo. Now, back to the food safety with the mayo, um, what is the, you don't want it to get too hot, it spoil, I mean, what is the range of time that you can have something out away from the ice before it 
Oh, a couple, couple hours, hours, depending on how yeah. hot it is. Although, okay. uh, I do get a lot of calls from people who say, can we, um, if they're ordering something, mm -hmm. um, can we avoid foods with mayo? And that's really like an old, it's almost becoming like an old wives' tale. Mayo is so highly, the way it's made today is so highly acidic that it's actually mm -hmm. safe. If anything were to make you sick and be out in the open for mm -hmm. a long time, chances are it would be the potatoes that are in your salad. Potatoes? And the potatoes really? you also have to be careful really? of. Really? Yes. See, I always thought it was the mayonnaise on the potatoes. <laughs> no. Oh, and the, the proteins, okay. whether it's a seafood or your chicken, your egg salad, it's more. Okay, so it's the protein, not the mayonnaise. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Because supposedly they say nowadays that mayo is so highly acidic, and, you know, unless you're making it from scratch. Which, right, so this is assuming you're buying it from a store, right. not making it yourself. That okay. it can, it's actually safe to just leave out and not refrigerate it. I wouldn't do that, but I have mm, heard that. So okay. I always worry about eggs too, for some reason, yes. more so than even a chicken yes. salad. And I don't know if it's just my thing or. Well, I think my mom is, is very, very careful with anything that's a day past its expiration date is out of the refrigerator. She's very, very careful about that. So I think I have a little bit of that in me and my husband will eat leftovers that are what I think are well beyond edible, but he, you know, he's like, oh, it's fine. So I've got two families that are very different um, in that. And eggs, um, we went to a wedding in Scotland and it was this beautiful location where they provided food for you and it was like an apartment and then they would provide food for the guests. And you walk into the apartment and there was a basket of raw eggs just sitting out. And you didn't, I thought, oh, I've got to put these in the refrigerator right away. But apparently, in, I have a friend who's from Ireland. She said, oh, no, raw eggs we keep out. It's the cooked eggs that we put in the refrigerator. Oh, funny. Yes, I heard that, that in Japan. Yeah. And I lived in France in the, the mid-70s, and it's amazing what they did not refrigerate for right. days that we, you right. know, we would And maybe think. they're just so fresh. I don't know if it has to do with how fresh they are, but I get nervous about that, too, with the eggs. So, so this is basically it, salt and pepper okay. to taste. It's, Very easy. It's sort of, um, as far as in the food color and world, food color world, mm -hmm. I sort of call this vanilla because it doesn't have a lot of color. Right. The bowl spices. But the bowl <laughs> is pretty. Doing it in a bed of greens, yep. you know, adding. This is a pretty sage flower from my garden. You know, that's adding, typical sage with a. a this I didn't is, know sage flowered. Neither did I till this year. <laughs> <laughs> that was left to grow long enough. Nice. Or some Beautiful. other little edible flowers. We have Johnny okay. Jump Ups here. So we can this here. show how we're... Very nice. You have to clean up the bowl, of course. Right. So that would be a nice way to display it. So what else? We have lots of other yummy things here. You were pointing to... This is egg salad? This is an egg salad okay, that I thought we that. would fill in a little okay. phyllo cup. Let's Switch places here. And phyllo cups filled do not travel well. However, okay. if you're at a picnic, yes, it's, that was, it's uh, a you, simple and easy project. Like my daughter, who's 12, would love. She's always it. looking so you for can something get the to help. Kids involved. So you would bring the empty cups, bring the salad, whatever you're going to stuff them with, and do it there. Yes. They would get mushy yes. if you pre did it, right? You can do them a few hours in advance. Oh, and can? they won't get and they won't okay. get mushy. Okay. They come on little trays, so you could actually leave them in the trays, fill them if you're pressed for time and you just want to open it up, and right. then just put them on your platter. Okay. Um, so we're but it's really easy. Now, what is in this egg salad? It lo it looks delicious. It looks we, like it has some extra things in there. We'd, <laughs> we some do. unexpected things. What's we, is that a secret too? No. <laughs> We're revealing Roast, all of uh, roasted red peppers, secrets. chives, parsley. Sometimes um, I even like to put in these, finely so diced. So this is with the final carrots. I like finely the, diced carrots. Yeah, I like the, the crunchiness crunch. and an additional color. Yes, you can see the red peppers. It, it, so it's roasted red peppers. Roasted red roasted peppers. Roasted red peppers. So jarred or either jarred or, or canned. Or canned. Okay, so you don't have to. You can roast. roast you yourself. can right. You don't have be to. Be fine to get them out of doom from the jar. Very nice. Uh, these little cups you can find in the 
frozen section of most grocery stores. Mm -hmm. And they're also good filled either savory with the chicken salad. Mm -hmm. The chicken salad, obviously, you would need to cut into much smaller right. it would cubes. Have to be Same thing very with the grapes. Or to fill them with a lemon curd, a chocolate mousse, chocolate pudding for the children. Ooh, chocolate Just pudding. That would entertain kids for a while. <laughs> Bring a tub of chocolate pudding and have them fill. And then... And I, then they just use their fingers and you don't have all the bowls and right. all that. That's nice. I like that. And then here, what I'm going to do is I call it the Jackson Pollock. You know, okay. Jackson Pollock was famous right. for just splashing. And this is just uh, finely diced parsley, parsley and kind of all over your platter. And this is the fresh parsley. Fresh parsley. Yep. Lovely. And around the edges, which adds a pop of color. So you don't have to be so precise as right. you want a you certain just, amount I'm on each. I'm going to see if I can hold this up without everything falling so we can get a nice shot of that. That's a, And that's a very simple display. And then you have some pansies, which we see. Great hors d'oeuvre for any about. time. And nice. then even one little petal from the Johnny Jump Up mm -hmm. or a whole little flower. Now, how far ahead could you do the um, egg salad? We just had this whole discussion about eggs, so maybe two we days. don't know, but <laughs> two days. I would okay. do two days. Two days. Okay. Would that be the same for deviled eggs as well? Yes. Okay. Although I would probably not fill the deviled eggs until the morning of. So have do the, the eggs and have your, do your filling, filling ready. But don't put it together. Yeah, if okay. they're unless they're covered really tightly with saran, they get the dry. Yes. Yes, I know exactly. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> so. Okay. Nice. All right. And then you have a few salads that Here we can we bring along. Here we have on. some salads. This is a it's a heart healthy potato salad with the little red potatoes and in here it's a rice wine vinaigrette okay. and there's all sorts of vegetables. You there can, are, a nice variety. There's seedless cucumbers, there's celery, mm -hmm. there's green onion, there's two different types of peppers, mm -hmm. there's little cherry tomatoes um, and olives, some mm -hmm. Kalamata olives. Fresh herbs are really nice to add to yes. it, especially this time mm -hmm. of year. Now, what makes it heart, health, heart, heart healthy other than the vegetables? Is it the seed, the saw, the um, vinaigrette is? The vinaigrette okay. is on the lower fat lower side. Lower fat side, okay. And nice. not as many saturated fats as the mayo. Right. Since it's just a vinaigrette. And you can do that? This days two, ahead. three days in two, three advance. Days. Okay. This is a quinoa salad, and quinoa okay. is a perfect protein. A lot of vegetarians okay. uh, like to eat it. And this one has some fresh asparagus, mm -hmm. dates, parsley, and mandarin orange. And this is a touch of a lemon vinaigrette, mm -hmm. also a heart-healthy dish. Okay. Well, that's the whole grain in addition right. to the low-fat dressing. Okay. And then here we have, this is our classic rice dish. I call it a three-rice dish. It's mm -hmm. not three rices. It's basmati rice, wild okay. rice, and wheat berries. It's tossed with sweet bell peppers, okay. a little bit of carrot, green onion, mm -hmm. and also a rice wine vinaigrette. It's crunchy, it's colorful, mm -hmm. it's great hot or cold. This you could make two, two three days in two, advance. Days. Okay. Um, now, when you do the wild rice, do you do the wild rice separate and the white rice or the brown rice? Yes. You do them separately? Yeah. Okay. Because they tend to have different cooking times. Right. Your wild rice and your wheat berries do take the take longest. Much, yeah. Wild rice, rice takes quite a while. Yes. Yeah. And the wheat berries do too. Okay. So. Nice. And they all smell delicious. And that's that. And you have some treats for the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not full already, we have... Something to fill in the cracks. And these are just little brownie bites. Um, so you just make a tray of brownies and All of this can be made small. and frozen a week right. or two in advance. And would you frost them ahead or frost them after you? You could frost them ahead, but not okay. freeze them not once freeze they come them. out right. of the freezer. Right. right. And then just a nice touch is to put it in a little pastry cup. Nice. And frosting, you know, this is kind of a little leaf and a cute little flower, but you can just frost them right. plain straight across. A chocolate frosting, okay. if you're too busy, have it out of the can. If you're too busy right. to make your own. Nice. Uh, and it's just a nice little touch. Now, how do you, you have lots of different things here. How do you pack it all up? Do you put the cold things, things that need to stay cold together, and then the paper products and everything in a different container? Yes. How do you... And if you don't have a beautiful picnic basket like this... <laughs> now, this would be for the plates, the paper goods. Yes. Because that's not an insulated... Correct. Right. So... Container. 
as many containers as you can that are space efficient. Okay. Um, so maybe the stackable type. And or, that close right. tightly. Okay. And something that you can stack and then a little cooler okay. or um, with ice or if I can get this here. They sell these at some of the local stores, and I just call them, I don't know the technical name, but I just call them ice blankets. So oh, you can yes. actually, and what you do is freeze them. They have a liquid in them. Mm -hmm. And So this is not something that you would want your kids to open up thinking it's an ice pack. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at thinking, some child would think, okay, I'm gonna, but this is not, I mean, that, it's not actually water, or is it water? It's there? some kind of liquid, I really okay. don't know. But it's, this is meant to be refrozen. Yes. Reused, right. And you can line the bottom of your right. cooler as well as put them on top of your plastic That's containers. Nice. And they're so flexible that yes. you can squish them into any space, which is nice because if you have a big block of ice, the, you know, you can't wrap things in it. Or let's say you're doing a pretty platter of grilled chicken breast and mm -hmm. you've laid it out nicely and it's a large mm -hmm. platter. You can use these both underneath <gasps> and on top Right. and keep them safe That's as you travel idea. to your destination. Or you could, I suppose you could even have this underneath the tray of a buffet or something. Yes. Because you know, they, you, can, you can buy things where you put the ice underneath and you put the shrimp or whatever it is on top, but this right. could serve as the same yes. in cold underneath. Or they have those ice blocks that you can buy pretty much anywhere, pharmacies right. or grocery right. stores. Right, right. I like the flex that these are flexible. You know, yeah, they're wonderful. That's nice. And you can get these at any local grocery store There's some, or supply yes. store. Okay. Or online. Okay. So now, um, as far as lugging it all, do you have any tricks? Any tricks? So you've got the picnic <laughs> basket, you've got the cooler. We have a cooler that has wheels. It has, you know, a handle Perfect. and it just has wheels. Is it, you just basically kind of find the easiest way, or do you have a trick to that? Uh, no tricks. No tricks. Except Shoot. there are... <laughs> I thought there was a trick. There are, um, it's kind of like a file box and it has an arm and it's also on yes. wheels. And I've used yes. that when I'm giving presentations to... Provides wheels to something that doesn't have wheels. Right. Right. And it works even on grass. Right. I, my sister's so, a teacher and she has one of those that she hauls her books perfect. back and forth to school. That's great. So if you don't have a cooler with wheels, you can get a, like a little trolley or a, one of those baskets. Right, wheel but those baskets. coolers with wheels are fabulous. Yeah, and ours even has holders for soda cans or whatever, drinks wow. on the top. It's, it's very nice, actually. It was a gift from my in-laws. It was very thoughtful. Very nice. So, um, so this is great, and I, you know, I think um, we're all set, I think. <laughs> the plan ahead, I, great tips on planning ahead, food safety. That, that was very enlightening to me that you could do some of these things so far in advance. And that the mayo isn't really what's spoiling, it's potatoes and proteins. So that's a good Well, you always need to think in to terms know. of safety and not, you know, and you also need to th think in terms of all the food safety. But um, yeah, it's not necessarily the mayo anymore, right. it's right. more the proteins well, and that's stuff. Good to and know. potatoes, they've always said. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. it if you want to get more information on picnic planning, you can contact Louise Alvin. Um, we will have a screen. Um, showing her contact phone number as well as her website. Um, so uh, I'm Sarah Connor. You've been watching Life in Style with Sarah. And um, hopefully you've been inspired to go out and take some time this month to have a picnic or do something else that makes your life great. Uh, thanks for watching. And um, until next month, have a good life. Good night. Mm -hmm.